when you look at the, the scope of human decision making, when you look at the scope of human communication, um, uh, emotional triggers for different cognitive decisions and things that we need to do, you can use fear. You can use fear very effectively. You can use anger very effectively, but it's, 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 a, it's an object that can be used in limit, right? There, there's a very uh, short lifespan or, or, or half-life on, on using fear, and I think that that's been kind of the biggest stick that cybersecurity has been carrying for the last few years, which is understandable based on the context, but I think we're in a new paradigm. I think that based on the evolving threat landscape, based on how much uh, technology is changing, based on how much else the, the employees have to deal with and understand in terms of corporate challenges and, and what's going on, that, that if it's the only tool in your toolbox, that's where the limit really comes in. That, that by exploring the different communication styles, by exploring different emotional triggers, by exploring um, the different ways to positively affect human behavioral change, then you've got a rich tapestry. Then you've got a whole different palette to paint with. And I think that um, you know being able to show through songs, show through skits, uh, all these different things that need to happen. You know, I can read a policy email. Okay, let's be honest, they don't really read them. Um, but you could try to send out a policy saying on um, protecting your laptop or, or uh, making sure your devices are safe, right? But if I actually watch a puppet drop a laptop and then everyone does a big scene and everyone has a big ha-ha about it, that will, will, will bur burrow itself into your, uh, your employees' minds just a little bit deeper. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to go full matrix on it, but, but it will get past that initial veil of I'm not paying attention because it's just in my inbox and I'm reading it in the context in which it was received. And I mean, really, who reads emails that are that long?